The Community Alliance newspaper had its beginning in the fall of 1996 as the Labor Community Alliance, a project of the labor movement and community activists here in Fresno. Our first meeting was held at the Center for Nonviolence. Copies of the first edition were printed at the offices of a local labor union and the Labor Community Alliance affiliated with the Labor Party. We were the Frank Little chapter of the Labor Party. Little was a labor organizer in the Industrial Workers of the World, the IWW, and was active in the 1910 and 11 free speech fight in Fresno. IWW members were being arrested for speaking on the public sidewalk in downtown Fresno as they attempted to organize farm workers. Nationally, the AFL-CIO was in a transition, now supporting immigrant workers, organizing the unorganized, and building labor community alliances. This publication was the public expression of the progressive trend in the organized labor movement in the Central Valley, usually featuring stories about union struggles on the front page. I became the editor in June 1998, when the Labor Community Alliance was transitioning into more of a community-based publication. As editor, I made changes in the look of the paper and eventually used it to rally community activists to support progressive causes like the campaign to stop the gap from using sweatshop labor. When 19 of us were arrested at the Fashion Fair Mall in May of 2000, protesting the gap, we used the incident to demand our free speech rights. Not only did we get all of the charges dropped, but we got the owners of the Fashion Fair Mall to pay a sizable settlement, which was distributed to progressive community groups. George and Maya Ballas became more involved with the paper at this time and dramatically changed the design and look of the publication. Their artistic touch turned the Labor Community Alliance into a high-quality magazine. Our next big change came when we went to newsprint and doubled our circulation. We were also working with a collective of young anarchists who brought an entirely different look and feel to the newspaper. But before long, political and stylistic differences led to the anarchists' departure. Although we kept the newspaper format and doubled our circulation again, now we were printing eight to 10,000 copies a month. A long period of slow but steady growth took place as we focused on using the newspaper to build a progressive movement in Fresno, validating the work of political activists and telling our narrative about the issues and the solutions progressives offer to the issues here in Fresno and the Central Valley. During this time, we have shined a light on the city of Fresno's cruel and heartless policy against the homeless. It was our tenacious coverage that forced the city to stop taking and immediately destroying homeless people's property. This paper made an issue out of the way homeless people were being treated. We demanded that they be treated with dignity and respect and eventually changed public policy. Boston Woodard, who writes on prison issues from inside the prison walls, has got to be the bravest writer on our staff. For telling us what is going on inside state prisons, Boston has had his typewriter taken away, he has been transferred to faraway prisons, and even tortured. If you consider being put in solitary confinement for extended periods of time, torture, which I do. Recently, the Community Alliance helped publish a book he wrote, which is a compilation of the articles he has written for us. We have also just published Hidden in Plain Sight, a book that Richard Stone wrote which consists of articles about local progressive activists, many of whom are here with us tonight. One of the things I'm most proud of is our ability to illustrate with these maps how voting patterns show that Fresno is not as conservative as many people think. What these maps show is that the vast majority of Fresnans will vote for progressive candidates and issues if we can get them out to vote. The problem is that the turnout at the northern end of Fresno is about 80%, and they vote overwhelmingly for Republicans and conservative causes. In the southern two-thirds of the city, the voter turnout is low, sometimes 20 to 30%. But they vote for progressive causes and candidates. This is a tale of two cities. Over the past six months, the Spanish language section has become a regular part of the Community Alliance newspaper that targets an important and growing demographic. Perhaps the best article we have ever published, and there have been a lot of excellent articles, was the one in the special section written by Mark Arax and his students at CSUF. 
Not only was this a great article, but Arax was teaching a new generation about the importance of investigative journalism. The article exposed the Fresno County Jail's policy of depriving inmates of the medications they needed to maintain their mental health. Since the article appeared last May, the director of the county health department has left. There have been important staff changes at the jail, and things seem to be improving. This is the power of good journalism and having an alternative independent newspaper like the Community Alliance that is not afraid to tell the truth. With your ongoing support, the Community Alliance newspaper will continue building a movement for social, economic, and environmental justice. We are a voice for the voiceless and a powerful force for free speech. It has been my honor and privilege to be the editor of this paper for the last 15 years and help you tell the amazing story of hope and courage that will ultimately lead to a more just and peaceful world.